Hey guys, it's Jordan from Weller Health Education with Leah Valley Hospital. I'm coming to you today from this YouTube video because most of you are probably virtual learning. If you are in school, you'll be watching this through your computer, tablet, whatever you're using. We're not going into schools this year to teach about health topics. We're doing it virtually through YouTube videos. So this is kind of our way to connect with you guys. So I hope that you still learn something new. I hope you still enjoy these videos. Today we are talking about something I think is important and we're talking about alcohol. So alcohol is an important topic because although it is legal in our country if you're of age, it's still an addicting substance. So we're gonna talk about what alcohol is, where it comes from, why it's addicting, what to do if you know someone who's addicted to alcohol or if you're concerned about someone's drinking. So we're gonna talk about all those things today and I hope that you learn something new and I hope that you enjoy this video. What is alcohol? So alcohol is created when grains, fruits, or vegetables are fermented. Fermentation is a process that uses yeast or bacteria to change the sugars in food and turns it into alcohol. So fermentation is used to produce a lot of different things. So it can produce cheese, it can produce medications or antibiotics, and it has all different forms. So alcohol's different forms can be used as a cleaner, especially right now. Maybe people are cleaning a lot of things with alcohol-based products as an antiseptic or a sedative. So when we talk about alcohol today, we're going to be talking about the alcohol that people drink. We call that a sedative. So alcohol is a sedative or a depressant, and we're going to talk about it in those terms today. So talking about fermentation, I just told you that it basically uses fruits and vegetables and grains to turn that stuff into alcohol. So people are like, hmm, that kind of sounds healthy. Like alcohol comes from foods that are pretty good for us. So it's not exactly healthy. So when people drink alcohol, it's absorbed into their bloodstream. From there, it affects our nervous system, meaning our brain and our spinal cord, and that controls all of our body's functions. So we know that the human brain is still developing in our teens, and it's not fully developed until we're in our mid-20s. So there are tons of different effects that drinking alcohol can not only have on the teen brain, but on overall brain health. So alcohol is not what we would call healthy. So I said we were going to talk about alcohol as a depressant or a sedative. So basically, alcohol is going to slow down everything in the body. So when you drink alcohol, it slows down your brain, making it harder for your brain to receive messages, makes it harder for you to process emotions, it's harder to see and hear, and it's also harder to perceive different things. It's harder for you to understand how people are perceiving things and how you yourself are perceiving things as well. So it also may affect your reaction time. So it may be very harmful if you're drinking lots of alcohol because you may not be able to react the way that you usually react. You might not have a good reaction time. It may be slowed or you may not react the way that you normally would. And like I said in the previous slide, your brain is not fully developed until you're in your mid-20s. So this means that alcohol is especially bad for people whose brains are not yet fully developed. We already mentioned that alcohol is a depressant and it slows down our brain and our responses to things. It slows down, you know, our reaction time, it may blur our vision. Some other effects of alcohol is something called intoxication. So people who overuse alcohol may be intoxicated. They may appear to stagger when they walk, lose their balance or coordination. Maybe they fall. Maybe they slur their speech. They might be confused or disoriented. And depending on the person, intoxication can vary. So sometimes when people are intoxicated, it can make them very friendly and talkative, or it can make them very aggressive and angry. So everybody's body's responds to alcohol a little bit differently. Slowed reaction time is a huge topic that I want to talk about because we said that when our brain and our spinal cord are being slowed down, our reaction time may be slower 
because of that alcohol. So this is probably why you've heard the saying, don't drink and drive. So people who are intoxicated may think that they're moving properly when they're not. And this can cause car accidents or injuries and maybe even death. So some people may think that even though they're drunk, they're perfectly fine to drive. And that's just because they're not thinking as clearly as they could be. Their reaction times and the way that they're processing things are slowed down. And it's actually really, really dangerous. And it's against the law to drink alcohol and then drive a vehicle. So as you can see in this picture, of the car in the tree, this is just something that could happen if somebody did choose to drink and drive. It's very unsafe and it puts a lot of people in danger. People who drink regularly often have problems in school and it affects your ability to study because you're focused on other things and again, your brain isn't working the way that it should be. Another additional issue associated with alcohol is that One study by the University of Washington found that people who regularly have had five or more drinks in a row starting at age 13 were much more likely to be overweight or have high blood pressure by age 24 than their non-drinking peers. So basically what that study says is, hey, if you start drinking at a young age, it puts you at a risk for a lot of other health issues like being overweight or obese or having high blood pressure. Another additional issue is that people who continue drinking heavily well into adulthood risk damaging their organs such as their liver, heart, and brain. So alcohol does have tons of different effects on the body besides just slowing everything down. And it has tons of different long-term effects that can affect you way into adulthood and for the rest of your life as well. The legal age to drink alcohol or purchase alcoholic beverages is 21. And the punishments are very severe if you do get caught drinking under the age of 21, trying to buy alcohol under the age of 21, or buying alcohol for somebody else who's under the age of 21. So say you know somebody who's 21 or older, and you say, hey, can you buy me some of that alcohol? And they go and buy it for you. That's actually illegal. If a person offers you a drink and you take a sip, That's illegal because you are under the age of 21 and the person offering you that alcohol is also doing something illegal because they're offering alcohol to somebody who's underage. So just remember that it's not just to buy it, but it's also to use that product. And if you try to purchase alcohol under 21 or if you get caught drinking alcohol under 21, the punishments are very severe and the fine rates are very high. So how to say no if somebody offers you alcohol. So if a drink of any kind is offered to you, there are important questions that you can ask. Just say, what is this and where did you get it? If the drink is alcoholic, make sure you just say, hey, no, thank you. Like I'm not of age to drink alcohol or I really would like to just drink something else that doesn't have alcohol in it. Just be nice and respectful and just say, hey, no, thank you. If the situation you're in is uncomfortable, leave any uncomfortable situation and make sure you have a way to contact a trusted adult to let them know where you are going and what just happened. So if you feel uncomfortable in any situation, regardless if there's alcohol or not, it's always important to get out of that situation and contact somebody you trust so you can be in a safe environment. If someone is drinking and they offer you a ride or they are your ride, Never accept a ride from someone who has been drinking, even if there's somebody you know. Make sure you tell them no and contact somebody that you trust immediately to let them know, hey, you know, this person is intoxicated or drunk and I don't feel comfortable getting in the car with them and find a different way home. So it's important that even if it's somebody you know and trust, if you know they've been drinking, don't get in the car with them. Contact somebody else and just let them know that you need a ride. Alcohol can also resemble drinks that you enjoy, which you need to be careful about because some alcoholic drinks look like fruit juices or smoothies or just drinks that you find around the house. And that can be confusing or maybe even just interesting to you because you think that it looks good. So you can see that this first picture here 
kind of looks like iced tea in a mason jar. And people are like, oh, like that's pretty. It looks like iced tea. I'm going to try that. But some iced teas actually have alcohol in it. The second picture kind of looks like a fruit juice, maybe something with like strawberry or cherry in it. Maybe there's even actual fruit pieces. And although it looks refreshing and enjoyable, it actually contains alcohol. And then that third picture there is a picture of lemonade. And now oftentimes we see lemonade and we're like, okay, you know, that's refreshing. I could really use a sip of lemonade. But some lemonades are adult beverages that do contain alcohol. So the first picture on this slide almost looks like root beer or like a soda that you would drink just out of a glass bottle. So this is actually something called spiked root beer. So it's root beer, but it has alcohol in it. So even though it looks like soda, it looks like something you might have every now and then, it actually does contain alcohol. That middle picture there kind of looks like a fruit smoothie. You can see that it has strawberries on top of it. So even though it's a smoothie looking beverage, that smoothie does contain alcohol. It might look like something that you would drink if it didn't have alcohol in it. And then that last picture is a picture of wine bottles. And I put that up there because sometimes you may have like sparkling grape juice, maybe around New Year's or around the holidays. And that sparkling grape juice is just juice and there's no alcohol in it. But the bottle that it comes in kind of looks like the bottles that are in this picture that contains wine. And wine is a form of alcohol. And wine is an alcoholic beverage that you shouldn't be drinking. So there is a difference between wine and sparkling grape juice. So I just wanted to show you guys that some drinks that you may enjoy kind of resemble alcoholic beverages that your parents may enjoy or your family members might enjoy. So just something to keep in mind. So when we're talking about alcohol, alcohol can be beer, liquor, wine, maybe you've heard of whiskey or vodka before, tequila, that kind of stuff. If you've heard of those words, that's the alcohol that's usually found in the drinks that I showed you. So if you've heard of those words, if you've heard people talking about them, those are some pretty popular choices of alcohol. So just something to watch out for. Again, if you're not sure, make sure you're always asking questions, asking what's actually in the drink before you drink it. So what if you're concerned with someone else's drinking? Sometimes people live in homes where a parent or other family member drinks too much alcohol. This may make you angry, scared, sad, and depressed. Many people can't control their drinking without help. So just like any other drug, you can become addicted to alcohol. If you know someone who is addicted to alcohol, make sure you're telling a trusted adult about your concerns so that person can get the help that they need. Alcoholism is an illness that needs to be treated just like any other illness. So it's okay to feel scared, upset, and hurt if you are concerned about someone else's drinking. This doesn't mean that that person loves you or cares about you any less. It just means that they are sick and that they do have a problem. It's something that they are addicted to and it may take them a while to get better. So just like anything else, just like any other drug, people do become addicted and it may be a long process before they do start to be sober or they start to get better. So that concludes our video on alcohol. I hope that you guys learned something new today. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for other videos from us.